emerging from the desert like some giant steel squid, the organic forms of Abu Dhabi's new airport terminal are starting to take shape. The existing airport has become too small for the ambitions of its main tenant, Etihad Airways, the smallest and fastest growing of the three giant Middle Eastern airlines, whose expansion has sown resentment among the legacy carriers of North America and Europe. For more than a decade, the Persian Gulf Airlines have transformed international travel, focusing on an obsession with service and single hub connections. They now fly to more foreign destinations and have more international seats than United States carriers. Now, how Etihad operates, especially how it is financed, has become critical in an increasingly contentious battle with airlines and unions in the United States, which accuse Gulf carriers of stealing passengers with the help of generous government support. A highly public rift erupted last month, when the chief executives of Delta Airlines, American Airlines and United Airlines met with senior government officials to argue that flights from the Persian Gulf Airlines into the United States should be scaled back. The effort represents a rare attack against open skies policies that the United States and its airlines have promoted around the world for years. Etihad is particularly exposed to criticism given how fast it has grown since it was founded in 2004. It now has more than 100 planes and flies to 110 destinations, including Sao Paulo, Brazil, Johannesburg and New Delhi. By 2017, the sprawling $3 billion new airport here will have an annual capacity of 30 million passengers, as much international traffic at New York's Kennedy Airport today, mostly driven by Etihad. And increasingly, it is targeting the United States. It has six daily flights to the United States, up from one six years ago, while Emirates Airline and Qatar Airways each fly to nine American cities daily. James Hogan, Etihad's chief executive, strikes an unapologetic tone. His mandate, he said, is to make money for his shareholder, the government of Abu Dhabi, and be a showcase for its hometown, the capital of the United Arab Emirates. Wherever you are in the world, you play to your advantage, said Mr. Hogan, who is Australian. What are we doing that's so wrong? We are doing business in a tough environment. We are commercial. We have to be creative. We are giving customers choice. Etihad and the other Persian Gulf Airlines operate the latest generation airplanes, hire younger flight attendants and offer onboard perks, like bars and showers, that other carriers find frivolous. Some of the service stretches the definition of first class. Etihad, for example, sells a $20,000 one-way ticket that comes with a personal flight attendant it calls a butler, a bedroom and a private bathroom. The airline contends such extravagance, available on one Airbus A380 now signals that anyone capable of such over-the-top luxury for a select few can also improve the lot in the back of the cabin. Continue reading the main story. American carriers, Mr. Hogan said, had not adapted to a globalized economy and were trying to protect their business by blocking competitors. It is a charge American carriers reject. The Persian Gulf Airlines, they respond, have received more than $38 billion in government subsidies. According to a 55-page dossier they have shared with government officials in recent weeks but have not made public. Etihad alone received $17 billion in government subsidies in the last 10 years, they say. This includes $6 billion in interest-free loans from the government of Abu Dhabi to buy new planes from Boeing and Airbus, and $6.5 billion to cover operating losses.